You know, this anime is like a mix between Bleach, Roroni Kenshin, and Soul Eater. the Black Critic Guy, sorry again for another late review. My family's finally out of my hair, so now the reviews will be coming in on time, I swear. And today I'm here to review the most highly requested anime review for Action Month, Noragami. So Noragami follows Yato, a god of calamity who takes on various job requests from people for a measly 5 yen, which honestly I found hilariously clever, especially if you understand Japanese culture. And one day while he's doing one of his job requests, he meets this girl by the name of Hiyori who saves his life from being run over by a bus, but in the process becomes a half phantom. Together, along with the spirit that Yato names Yukine, the three of them go out, do remedial jobs, and also hunt down these things called phantoms. And that's pretty much the show. Now this anime, along with Kill a Kill, was the most requested anime for me to watch in Action Month. I mean, it got a shit ton of votes, and a lot of people kept saying, please, watch Noragami, it's so good, you're gonna really like it. So needless to say, it got me pretty interested and excited to see what Noragami was all about. And if it was any bit as fun as Kill a Kill was, I couldn't wait to see it. So I finally finished watching the anime today, and... Eh. I'm so sorry to all the fans of Noragami out there, but I just found this anime so average. Which is really sad to say about an action anime. But let's start as always talking about the good aspects of this anime. First off, and this goes without saying once again, the animation throughout the entire anime is solid. I especially like the animation in the opening theme. I thought it was really creative and I just liked the way that it looked. It looked really good. The best thing that this anime has going for it is that its concept and characters are pretty interesting. I mean, the concept about these gods pairing up with these souls known as Chinkies and using them as weapons to fight off phantoms, that was pretty interesting. I would have loved to know more about this world and how the relationship between Shinkies and God started. That would have been really nice to know, but they don't really explore it that much and we'll get into that more later. And also the characters. Most of them are pretty interesting and very likable. I did like the main character, Yato. He had a very likable personality. He was a bit silly at times, but he could be serious when he wants to. He kind of reminded me of Kenshin from Moroni Kenshin. He had almost the same personality as him. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the creator drew a lot of influence for this character by reading or watching Moroni Kenshin. Wouldn't be surprised in the least bit. I also like Hiyori. At first, I didn't really understand what her purpose was in the anime. She kind of just felt like she was shoehorned in to be in the anime because we needed a cute girl. But later on, I did realize that she was the glue that kept the team together. And she did serve a bigger purpose to the plot. And I did appreciate her character later on. And I also found the other gods pretty interesting and enjoyable as well. Like you got Tenjin, the god of higher knowledge or education, either one. He was pretty enjoyable at times, pretty funny. I also liked the god of poverty, this pink haired girl. She was funny at times, very enjoyable. And I did like her Shinki, this really buff guy who just has this mean look to him and then you got the war god her name is Bishaman I believe that's how you pronounce it she was freaking badass and I loved her collection of shinkies they were all pretty interesting as well but they don't really explore any of them further to the point of just oh this is what I do these are my crew that's it. But in my honest opinion, the best and most interesting character in this entire anime goes to Yukine. This character goes through a lot of development and growth throughout the entire anime. And I just love seeing the emotional turmoil that he goes through in this anime. He was very interesting, very compelling. He is the best character in the anime. And a little fun fact, the guy who voices this character is also the same guy that voiced Eren Yeager from Attack on Titan. 
Pretty interesting, huh? And the last thing that I really liked in this anime is that I thought episodes 9, 11, and 12 were the best and most compelling episodes in this entire anime. Now, I won't give out too much details about what goes down in these episodes, but I personally thought that it has the best drama, the best use of tension, the best action moments in the entire anime, and the best character growth. That's why I really enjoyed these episodes. If the entire anime was like those three episodes, I wouldn't have so many problems with this anime. But, sadly, I do. And with that said, I guess we should go into the problems that I had with this anime. The first and probably the biggest problem that I had with this anime was just a lack of investment in anything that was going on in this entire anime. In layman's terms, I just really didn't care what happened throughout the entire anime. Yes, I found the concept, story, and characters very interesting, but I just didn't care what was going on the story or what the characters were doing or any of the dilemmas that they would get into. I mean, hell, there's this one episode where a character is literally about to die and I just didn't care at all. He could have died and I would have been like, oh, I well, that kind of sucked. And the reason for that is although they make the characters in the story very interesting, they just don't develop the story or the characters to make you really care about what happens to them. That is a huge problem for any anime or any movie. If you don't develop the characters or the story for us to be invested in, why should we care? And do not get finding an anime interesting confused with caring about anime. You may find something interesting, but that doesn't mean you're gonna automatically care about it. I find math very interesting, but I could give two shits about math. Honestly. And yeah, sorry to all of you math lovers out there, but I have never been a fan of math and I never will be. Next is the music. Now I know a lot of people don't really care about the music, it's just background noise, but in my personal experience, music in an action anime can either heighten or lessen the intensity of an action scene. I mean, just watch Gurren Lagann, Bento, freaking Kill La Kill. All of those animes, the music really heightened the action scenes in that anime. In this one, there's like one theme that helps to heighten the action scenes, but for the most part, the music ranged from subpar to straight up forgettable. But I guess it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, because the next problem that I have with this anime was actually its action scenes. The action, when it was on the screen, and yes, I do mean that because they don't really show a lot of action in this anime. There's like four or five big battles in the entire anime, and most of them were pretty tamed. There wasn't a lot of exciting or thrilling action scenes, and even when they did do an exciting action scene, the way that it ended wasn't really thrilling or exciting at all. Now, don't get this twisted. I wasn't expecting to see Kill a Kill style action scenes in this anime, but what I was hoping for was a good and thrilling fight scene now and again in this anime, and I just never got it. There were like two fight scenes in the entire anime that came very close to being a good thrilling fight scene, but it either ended abruptly or just ended anticlimactically and it was just... It was okay. The next problem that I had with this anime was just the unbalanced nature of the comedy and drama in this anime. Just like the hentai prince and stony cat, there are just these scenes where they're being overly comical, but then at the snap of a finger, they get really serious and dramatic. There is this one scene where they do this not once or twice, but five times. Five times! It got really frustrating and annoying. The last problem that I had, and probably is the second biggest problem that I had with this anime, was the vague exploration of the world of Noragami. I mean, they failed to go into deep detail about the characters, the setting, the story, the backstory of the characters, the relationships between characters. They just failed to expand on everything in this anime. Now that's not to say that they didn't try to explore the characters, their backstories, or their relationships with other characters. 
There were moments sprinkled here and there in the anime where we did get a glimpse at a character's backstory or a little bit of an understanding of their relationship with other characters, but some of them are very vague. I mean, they don't outright say it, but you get an understanding. Yato having the most developed backstory in the entire anime. It's talked about the most and it's shown the most. But it would have been nice to explore or expand on some of these other backstories that are mentioned in the anime, although very briefly, like in one sentence or through like flashes of pictures, or like to expand on some relationships that they briefly mention but never really dive into. I mean, I really would have loved to have seen them explore more of Yukine's backstory in the anime, get an understanding of what his life was like before he died, and maybe what caused his death. And we do get little glimpses now and again, but never a full picture or a clear understanding. There are also some relationships that are never really explored or expanded upon, like the relationship between Yato and the God of Poverty. How did that start? I would have loved to have seen how their relationship began, how it was like before, or even his relationship with the with another god's Shinki. He has a relationship with another god's Shinki, and they mention it very, very briefly in one sentence, and then that's it. It's never really mentioned again. What a waste. But I really think the reason for the lack of exploration of these characters is because they had a really short runtime of 12 episodes to tell as much story as they could. This anime really would have benefited from a 24 episode run. I mean, they could have really gone more into the story, develop the characters, build the relationships, explore a little bit of their backstory. It would have really benefited from a 24 episode run. But they didn't get that. And at the end of the day, the anime just feels like one of those go read the manga if you really want to know the full story type animes. And I hate animes like that. So overall, it may seem like I hate this anime, but I don't really hate this anime. But I do think that this anime is way overhyped. I mean, it's not as great as many people are saying it. Yes, the concept is very interesting. The characters are very interesting. I did like Yukine as a character, and there are some fun action scenes, and the animation is solid. But they just don't explore any of the characters as much, and it, I just didn't really care by the end of the anime. It just came off as, eh, it's, it's okay, it's average. And that's why I'm going to give this anime a 3 out of 5 stars. Eh, it's okay. But I will say this, if they do make a second season, I would really like to see it, because this anime has a lot of potential. Again, had a really good concept and characters. They just really need to expand and explore a little bit more of the world of Noragami and then it can be great. But anyway, what did you guys think about this anime? Were you one of the people that absolutely adored it? Or were you like me and felt like it was way too overhyped and wasn't really anything special? And let me know what is the most overhyped action anime you've ever seen. Comment below and let me know. And hopefully I didn't piss off too many people out there. Again, these are just my opinions. If you don't agree, that's fine and dandy, but hopefully you respect them. And stay tuned, I will be reviewing Godzilla coming soon, and I have a new video coming up on We Live Film on my top five favorite monster movies. So go check that out, and until then guys, hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel, Welcome to the Black Critic Guy. Like this video if you really enjoyed it. And I'm Tony Walton II, the, the Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace YouTube.